Okay, so principal rule of painting is get it wet. Okay. Just like principal rule of martial arts is be like the nature of water. And then we have some we have some rules in painting. Scrape and prime, caulk and finish. <laughs> There's all these myths about painting. Like stir sticks. Yeah. We don't use them. We don't use them. And uh, real painters don't use tape. Just to throw that out there. Is that right? Real painters don't use tape. Okay. Okay. So I don't use paint. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut. I'm going to cut the line with a brush. And this all translates to knife technique pretty awesomely. Especially when you're doing windows. All right. So I'm going to cut this line up here. And there's the other thing is we have a top to bottom, left to right, inside now. Uh, another rule in painting is never leave a wall unfinished, especially when you're doing gloss, because it'll flash. There's another rule of painting. Get your finger in there. <laughs> Probably apply that to martial arts too. <laughs> That's right. And if you don't have yours, take this. <laughs> <laughs> so you want to train your left hand. You train your right hand too. So yeah. sometimes I have to paint with my left hand, sometimes I have to paint with my right hand. And then you have all of this play with how to hold the brush. Just like you would with a knife. Sometimes I'm cutting here. I'm changing the hand over. Okay, so let the paint do the work. So then I've got what I call bucket on the wall. I'm just going to take some paint and I'm going to throw it up onto the wall. And that's what I'm going to paint on. There's that little bucket right there. So cutting the line. I get inside of the paint. And real sensitively, like I'm monitoring, is I'm going to fan this out. And as I fan it out, I've got these tiny little bristles. And they're going to find the crack up in there. Now all I have to do is kind of just let the paintbrush do its thing. All inside crack. Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily that I'm cutting a very fine line very quickly. It's that I'm sensitive to where the paintbrush is grabbed into that corner, and I'm just going to let the paintbrush and the paint do the work. Good. You know, uh, I remember when I was I went out to lunch with one of my teachers one time, and we're watching people walk down the street, and he's like, "Don't mess with that guy." Like what? It's like, did you see how he was walking? Because <laughs> martial artists, they walk differently than most people do. That's what I've heard. And if you know, and it's all about a, uh, it's all about center. It's all about center line. Yeah. And you know, people that are uneducated when it comes to a body art, they'll walk a certain way, almost clumsy, almost, you know, just not thinking about what they're doing. Yeah. But martial artists, depending on the martial artist, but. Uh, smart martial artists, they're meticulous in everything, in their movement. So when they walk, uh, their demeanor is different, their posture is different, um, they're moving from their center instead of, you know, from their legs. Yeah. Well, I know we're going to do some calling here later. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so principal rule of painting is let the paint do the work. Okay. Okay. Um, if you see people painting their houses, and what they'll do is they'll get all of the paint spread out, and they'll start running out of paint, and they'll be like, pushing it, trying to get it out. You don't want to do that. You want to have just a little bit of resistance to it. And notice I'm not, I'm not trying to push the roller into the wall. No. What I'm trying to do is I'm monitoring the paint. So again, I'm just trying to let the paint do the work. Okay. First I throw the paint up onto the wall and then I'm just gonna move it around. Okay. 
But if you see, I'm using my hip to get the roller to work. So I'm not standing here using my arm. Okay. Hi. Hi. And there's the, there's the hip twist. See the hominy, hominy working, and later on when we get into the Joe, you'll see a lot of this stuff. Okay, so core movement. So I'm not going to go up to the door and go with okay. my arms. Yes, sir. Okay. Particularly if it's a heavy door, like a big fire door. Okay. What I want to do is I, I go up and I put my extension on it. More specifically, I can get my arm up to the door by swinging it with my hip. So I put my hand up on the door, and then I push it with my center, or vice versa on the other side. Okay. Yeah, similar thing that I've been playing with from the standpoint of doors. And so in, uh, so in any white crane based kung fu, that sort of thing, they've got a lot of this. You know, like here, and you got foot sweeps as well as monitors. Uh, you can use the same thing with the door. When you open the door, uh, and you can work on, and what's interesting is it works timing. Because the door opens, the door moves at a certain pace, and catching that door without, without uh, impact. I don't want to, you know, I want to match its speed and pull it open. Maybe it's a heavy door. Maybe it's here. And if nothing else, I've already got my foot there to keep it from falling back on me. I, a lot of times I carry stuff, uh, carrying computers and things like that. And so to catch that door, and if nothing else, I can plant my foot and the door's not closing. And then I can worry about position to get through the door from there. Doors are cool. Doors, doors are well. doors in martial arts. <clears throat> Quick. So you've got these other tools here. This guy, what's this guy is for? Everybody wonders what this is. This is the five in one. We call it a five in one because there's five different tools on this one thing. There's actually this is actually a six in one because it has a nail remover right here. Everybody wonders what this is for. So that I can get the paint off my roller. So that's just a little fun fact. The five in one. It's interesting. You look at the shape of that, and then you go look at traditional Filipino weapons. And they look awfully similar. Always oh, there, right? They do. The, uh, they were painters. I've got the zinc with gold on it. <laughs> yeah, the. Uh, I had a, a friend of mine is a painter back east, and painters like to drink. I think there's some no! between alcoholics <laughs> and painters. But anyway, this guy's out at a bar. He goes out into the parking lot and these guys try to jump him. And he didn't have a knife, but he had his five and one. He pulls out his five and one. And everybody he's like, I, <laughs> I don't know what that is, but that's scary. <laughs> like it looks that. pretty menacing. So. Yes. Cool, folks. How's it going? Good, doing all right. We just did a uh, painter lesson as it pertains to Knife and Joe. And now we're going to go do some Knife and Joe work. Dojo. Okay, so basically, the uh, the Joe stick is either uh, a walking stick or a spear. So uh, sometimes it you can use both ends, um, and sometimes you need to be conscious about what end is is the other end. So, uh, like when you're painting, it's the same thing. You're not going to paint with both ends. I'd be a really good painter if I could do that, but. Um, so back to what I was doing with the roller, okay, is what we're doing with ski here. Okay. So I'm not using my arms here. And if I walk down the street, you can see that my arms kind of naturally swing from side to side. So I don't walk on the mat like this. Okay. So the same thing happens here with the jaw. If I'm standing in my hot knee, I move my hips back and forth. My arms are not actually moving. I'm not doing this. I, so then I pick up the Joe, and the Joe is just an extension of my body. Okay. So I'm getting the Joe to move because my center is moving. That's the same thing that I was doing with the roller back there. 
So then you have these different schools of thought on how to do ski. Okay, some some are kind of here and move in, and might be kind of move close together. Another school of thought is that I'm going to curl this underneath here, okay, and use this as a brace so that I can push it after I finish. So then this comes in line with my hobby. Okay, so I'm here. And then this is down on top so that I can push down if I need to. Okay. So then with the knife, you have different play with the knife. Okay. <coughs> so you can slash, okay. you can change it over, and you can slash this way, or you can stab. Okay. Slash, and come back and stab. Same thing, you're dealing with a paintbrush. So I'm, I'm cutting the line. Sometimes I have to get in there and do it a little bit different. But it's the same idea as a paintbrush. Maybe. <laughs> but how smooth the stroke is and stuff like that's going to be how relaxed you are, how, how smooth the arc is when you make it. Hi, and a lot of that has to do with how much paint is on the wall. Because if I've got. Um, if I don't have very much paint on the wall, I'm really struggling to try and move this paint that's already seeping into the wall. Whereas if I have a whole lot of paint on the wall, then I'm just moving around. I'm just trying to move the paint around and, and you know get it all smooth and evened out. But um, same thing applies to the martial art. Is I I want to I'm trying to take the effort out of it. when I'm painting. I'm trying to take the effort out of it. Smarter, not harder. Okay. You know when I'm when I'm killing somebody. Is it easy for me? <laughs> yeah, you don't want to put too much effort into it. You don't want to put when you're killing somebody, you don't want to put too much effort into it. 